In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and as always, it's great to be with all of you. Great to be with all of you. So as we start off this new week, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and re rejoice in it. We'd like to always invite Mary to be with us. So Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church, and Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. Also, we pray invoking Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. That's right. Mary is our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's uh, lift uh, our minds and hearts to Mary, the mother of God, begging Mary to be with us as we embark upon a new week in which we really want to find Christ in others and glorify Christ by our lives, that we could truly be the light that God is calling us to be. So let's uh, pray the prayer that Mary loves so much. It's called the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let's invite to be with us our spiritual director. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has many different titles. The Holy Spirit is known as the paraclete. The Holy Spirit is also known as the gift of gifts. The Holy Spirit is also the sweet guest of our souls. The Holy Spirit is also known as the sanctifier. He who makes us holy. The Holy Spirit is also known as our counselor. Counselor, as well as our consoler. The Holy Spirit is also our interior master. Our interior master. So, let's pray the Holy Spirit. St. Paul says we really don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groan. So we can say Abba, which means Daddy or Father. So let's pray, begging the Holy Spirit to give us a lot of light in our intellect and the fire of divine love to burn within our hearts as we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. 
Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. A very happy, holy, and joyful Sunday to all of you. So on this Sunday in which we celebrate always the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's right, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice in the greatest gift that Christ had given to us, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So on this day, I'll place all of you on, on the altar in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, which is the greatest prayer in the whole world. It's the prayer par excellence, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. I'd like to offer the following intentions. The following intentions. The first intention, let's pray that as we start off this new week, that all of us would be open to the Holy Spirit. We'd be open and docile to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. Open and docile to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. This could be our prayer. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. My second intention, I'd like to pray for all of our families. We all have the prodigal sons, the lost sheep, the wandering and forlorn souls that are walking in the shadow of darkness because they've walked away from the light who is Christ, Christ who is the light of the world. Let's pray for them, that they would move from the darkness into the light. They renou renounce their deeds of darkness and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray for them. Pray for their eternal salvation. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and, and lose his soul in the process? What does it profit me? He gained the whole world and lose his soul in the process. And my other intention would be I'd like to pray with you for those who will be dying within the next 24 hours. Let's pray especially for those who are who are not prepared to die, possibly they're living in mortal sin, that they would be saved. That they would be saved. What would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul that through our prayers, our mass, our rosaries, our sacrifices, our sufferings, that these people would be saved? Nothing more important in this world than for 
each and every one of us to, to make it to heaven. So let's pray for those who are dying. I'd like to make a final intention and we can move into the riches of of the word of God and I'd like to pray that all of you because we're all part of our perseverance family would, would pray because we're going to be starting this spiritual exercises program the Lenten program we're going to be starting today in English and tomorrow in Spanish. Today in English and tomorrow in Spanish. So I'd like to ask for your prayers. That many people would come that they would open up their hearts to God's infinite mercy and love and that these will be the 10 most important best weeks in their lives. But this 10 week program my friends will take us all the way through Lent up, up to Easter. That's right. Take us all the way through Lent, all the way up to Easter. So I invite for your I invite your prayers that people would respond to this program, the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Today our program starts at 1.30 after the 12 o'clock Mass, and tomorrow in Spanish we'll be starting at 7.15, both at St. Peter Chanel Wine Gardens, and the meeting place will be the Old Church Building. All of you are invited if you'd like to come. If not, invite your prayers for this spiritual exercises program that are changing so many lives changing so many lives. Yesterday I had a great experience. I'm I'm a guest often on the radio and TV program called El Sembrador or El, the Sower. And about four times a year they have big retreats in LA Convention Center. So yesterday I was there from about, about one o'clock all the way up to six non-stop confessions. I probably heard a hundred confessions in five hours. What a blessing to be a priest, to be able to reconcile, reconcile souls to God. Calculating there's about 4,000 people there for that retreat. It's the metanoia, metanoia for the women and many, many special blessings come when you have these uh, retreat experiences. So I try to be available to hear confessions when they've got this weekend retreat. So I'd like to pray for all those who are involved in this Sembrador retreat as well as for all those who have gone to confession and will go to confession. All right, my friends. So we'll be praying for all of you. Pray for Amalia and her mother and her sister, mother whose health is not that good. We'll pray also for all of your intentions. I'll pray for all your intentions. Place you on the altar in my mass. So let's uh, unite together as a family to pray fervently for the many intentions that God places on our on our hearts. So I'd like to give you a, a um, brief 
overview, a panoramic vision, an eagle eagle's eye view of of the richness of the richness of our of the liturgy of the hours today. I'm sorry, the liturgy of the Eucharist today. You know uh, that on Sunday we have three readings in the responsorial psalm. So I'd like to give you just a, a brief summary, then we'll we'll go into uh, we'll go into the readings and we'll uh, we'll glean these spiritual golden nuggets for our spiritual lives. So the first reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah. And the overall theme is that of light. Your light shall break forth like the dawn. So we'll be, ex we'll be expounding upon that. Your life will break forth like the dawn. That's Isaiah chapter 58, 7 to 10. The response to real Psalm, Psalm 112, builds upon the topic of light. And the antiphon is, the just man is a light in darkness to the upright. The just man is a light in darkness to the upright. So we're called to be a light. Now we've been going through the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We've arrived at chapter 2. And one of the basic themes in this short second reading from St. Uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians is Paul says, I have announced to you the mystery of Christ crucified. Paul is going to insist upon the power of preaching Christ crucified. That he died on the cross for us. The most eloquent symbol of love in the world is Christ on the cross. He gave himself and he died for me, as St. Paul says in another letter. And remember last week, we're in letter, we're year A in the church liturgical calendar, letter A, B, and C. So letter A is we're going through the Gospel of St. Matthew. Just recalling this for you, you probably remember last last Sunday we had the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount in which we had the eight Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who weep. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for holiness. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who suffer for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So that was the that was the gospel last week. And Jonathan Rumi in The Chosen actually has an episode on Jesus preaching the Sermon on the Mount. Very well done. Very well done. So the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to be going through that in the Sunday Masses, and the Sermon on the Mount can be found in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. So today, Jesus gives a simile comparing us to three different things. We are called to be the salt of the earth, we're called to be the light of the world, and we're also called to be a city set on a mountain. So we're called, by means of simile, we're called to be the salt of the earth, 
We're called to be the light of the world. We're called to be a city shining bright, uh, shining bright on the top of the mountain. So that's an overview of um, our readings for today. So let's return to the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah. And I'd like to pull out Yeah, Prophet Isaiah is basically starting off with giving us some of the some of the corporal works of mercy that were called to put into practice in our lives. My friends, we're we're gonna be judged on our love of God, but also the way we show our love of God through the way we show our love for our neighbor. So Isaiah chapter 58 is somewhat of a parallel to Matthew chapter 25 in this sense. Matthew chapter 25, Jesus says that the goats will be separated from, separate from the sheep. And Jesus will say, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was a prisoner. I was a foreigner and you welcomed me. I was sick and in prison and you visited me. When, Lord? When, Lord? And whenever you did it to the least, whenever you did it to the least of my uh brethren, brothers and sisters, then you did it to me. Whenever you did it to the least of my brothers and sisters, you, you did it to me. Enter into the joy of my Heavenly Father. So I'd like to take one. Jesus says to give clothes to give clothes to the naked. I'd like to tell you a story. I'd like this story in the life of a saint. And the name of the saint is probably a saint that many of you have not heard of. His name is Saint Alberto, and his last name is Hurtado. Saint Alberto Hurtado. Before being transferred to California, I I lived in South America for seven years. I lived in two years in Chile and five years in Argentina. If you ever go to Chile, there are two famous saints in Chile. One would be Santa Teresa de los Andes, who was a young Carmelite that none that died when she's about 20 years old, making her vows almost under deathbed, an articulus mortis. Then another of the most famous saints in Chile, probably the most famous saint, would be Saint Alberto Hurtado, who was a Jesuit priest that died in the early 50s last century. He, he died of pancreatic cancer. And this saint, Alberto Tado, did so much good. But I'll tell you how it came about. And I see a connection between the first reading the third the first reading as well as the, the gospel reading. St. Alberto Tado was a Jesuit priest brought up and raised in Chile and he was instrumental in putting into practice what is called the social doctrine of the church. Pope Leo XIII 
had issued what would be almost the blueprint or the foundation of the church's teaching and the social doctrine of the church back uh, almost the turn of the century, the late 1800s. And it was called Rerum Novarum, which Pope Leo XIII insisted that if we're Catholics, we have to be involved in the society trying to bring the, the salt and the light of the world to others. To bring the salt and the light of the world to others. So when Alberto lived back in the 1900s, he's going to be brought up. He's going to be living the first part of the 20th century. In 1900, he's going to die around 1951-52. There was a lot of poverty in Chile. And as you notice in South America, there's a very clear distinction between the richest of the rich and the poorest of the poor. And um, he, uh, he wanted to help out the poor. But this is how it came about. He, one cold, rainy night, he was left, leaving the bishop's <coughs> office, which the bishop had dismissed him from being the head of Acción Católica, Catholic Action, Basically because there was a lot of jealousy. It was mounting in popularity. It was uh, like a John Bosco attracting many young people. He was drumming up vocations right and left. And because of this jealousy of another cleric, the Archbishop dismissed him from that key role. He was persecuted for the sake of righteousness. But God has his ways of working. Often what happens is God will, God will close a door. God will, will allow a door, a, a door to be closed, but to open up another door. God will close the door, but to allow for another door to be open. So he was rejected, and it hurts to be rejected. We all have been rejected in our lives, so true. So as he's heading toward his residence at night, it's a cold, rainy night. He meets a poor, homeless beggar. And Father Hurtado draws close to this man. And he's shivering. in the cold weather. He's shivering in the cold weather as the rain is coming down upon him. The poor man has no cloak. And Father Hurtado draws close and asks the man, Donde vives? And he says, Donde caiga, Padre? You know Spanish. He asks, Where do you live? And he says, Wherever I fall for the night. Poor man says, sometimes the Salvation Army will put me up. And Father Otavo draws close to, he places his forehead on the forehead of this man, 
He said, you got a fever. Then Father Otardo takes his cloak off. He takes his cloak off and he places it on the man. The man that's shivering beneath the rain. Then the man thankful recedes into the background and he disappears. That night, Father Tatha had a dream. And his dream pointed out that that man was really Jesus Christ. That man was really Jesus Christ. So Isaiah says, Our light will break forth when we, when we give bread to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, and we clothe the naked. There's a parallel, there's a parallel story in the life of another saint. You see how once, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen afterward in the life of Father Todd, but I'd like to give you a parallel, a parallel story. This one happened in around around the year 400, and the story of a, a man sitting on a horse in France, very cold. And this man is a soldier. He looks down from his horse and he sees. Like in the case of Father Hurtado, a man that's shivering, naked. So the soldier cuts his cloak in two and gives it to that poor man. That very night that soldier saw Jesus wearing that cloak. Jesus wearing that cloak. That man, that soldier that cut his cloak in two, went on to become a Catholic, a priest, a bishop, and a great saint. The name of that saint is Saint Martin. Martin il Caballero. You read in the life of St. Faustina, there was a poor man at the door. She prepared hot soup for this poor man, and Jesus said, Jesus said, that poor man, that poor man was Jesus Christ. My friends, these are stories that can all encourage us to to try to be the light that breaks forth like the dawn. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But then he said, Jesus says, you are the light of the world too. So let's go back to Father Otado. St. Alberto Otado. After that encounter with that poor man, for whom he gave his cloak. Father Tado had a, an inspiration to build, to build in Chile, these homes for the poor. And if you do speak Spanish, it's called El Hogar de Cristo. You know your Spanish well? It's called O Ogar de Cristo. If you know your Spanish well, Ogar de Cristo would mean the home for Christ. So 
So if you know you know Chilean, geography, Punta de Arenas, the Aquique would be from south all the way to the north. Father Hurtado began to build, with the help of others, these homes for the poor of Chile, and there were many. And this would be for orphans, for the marginalized, for the beggars, for the sick, for the dying, for unwed mothers. In a certain sense, this would be the Chilean version of what Mother Teresa was doing on a, on a global scale. On a global scale. So, given that I'm expounding upon this, I'd like to tell another story of Father Ta. The stories of the saints are beautiful, aren't they? So after Father Ta, though, after Father Alberto Ta, though, has already, with the help of many people, established the first Ogar de Cristo in Santiago. The government, as well as the police, are worried that he's going to, he's like a political radical. He's going to, he's promoting socialism and he's going to become a political radical. So he has a soup kitchen there and the police come to spy on him. But what has happened is He's got a soup kitchen for these elderly women. And it's lunchtime. And their father, Hurtado, their father, Hurtado, is serving the people. And the police is looking through the keyhole. There they thought this father, Hurtado, is going to be a political revolutionary. There he is. He's bent over a cauldron of hot soup and he's serving the elderly. And this is the, one of the most touching scenes, I think, in, in the movie. You can see the, the movie is called, and I don't think it's translated in Spanish, it's called in Spanish. Cronica di Nombre Santo, and that would be the life of Father Alberto Hurtado. So as the police is peeking through the keyhole, Father Hurtado, what does he do? He's bending over, ladling out soup to these elderly, sick women. And he says to them, this is the best we have. This is the best we have. And he says, I'm really sorry because you deserve much more than this. Really sorry because you deserve much better than this. And then Father Tavo says, Will you forgive me? 
He asked me, will you forgive me? And they say, si padre. Si padre. And then the police disappears, recognizing that this man is not a political revolutionary. But he's simply a man that wants to serve the poor. Remember what we're talking about, Isaiah. Give your bread to the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn. So I'm giving you, my friends, a lot of stories to live out. Isaiah and, and the gospel, you'll see, will be a parallel where Jesus is going on. To, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You're a city set on a hilltop. Gerardo says this is one of his favorite Catholic movies. Also, yes, for me, I, it's, uh, it's, it's just a great movie. With your permission, it's such a great movie. There's, there's a lot of individual stories that are that are within the movie that are so inspiring. I'd like to tell you one other one other episode in this movie. I think this has been shown on EWTN with uh, the titles in English below because I don't think it's been dubbed into English, um, the audio part, but it's dubbed below. And EWTN has, has shown this in the past. It's called Cronica di un Hombre Santo. Alberto Hurtado. So let me tell you another story, and this is all related to the first reading and the gospel that Father Hurtado was a great light, a great light that was shining in Chile. His mother Teresa was a great light that was shining in the whole world. We're called to be lights also. Maybe they're not the same magnitude as Mother Teresa and Father Todd, but we're all called to be lights in, in one, one way or another. So here's another, here's another episode from Cronica di Nombre Santo. As you see in the lives of the saints, They're often carrying out missions, works that go beyond what's humanly speaking, what's humanly speaking possible. They're, they're trying to carry out the impossible. But what the saints have, what we're lacking, is the saints have a limitless trust in God. That's right, the saints have this limitless trust in God. This limitless trust in God. Now what has happened at the latter part of the movie Father Pado uh, has established the Ogar de Cristo in the center of Chile, which is Santiago. But he wants to build another house in Colima. There's a Colima in Mexico, but also there's a Colima in Chile. But as is the case, you also see in the life of John Bosco, Father Tado doesn't have money. 
John Bosco went on to build one of the most beautiful churches in Europe, Our Lady Help a Christian, which would have cost millions of lira. He only had two or three cents in his pocket. The same the Sacred Heart of Jesus in Rome. John Bosco was something called Don Busco because he would be looking for money from the poor, from the rich. The rich giving to the poor, they're giving it to Christ. So Father Otado has decided through discernment that he would like to build another Ogar de Cristo in Colima. And he doesn't have the money. So he's in a He's in a building, sitting in the um, entrance, kind of reflecting. And next to him next to him you could see a couple of the accountants who are trying to calculate how to defray the cost for Santiago and they've already heard that Father Tada wants to build another house in Colima. They simply don't have the money. They don't have it. And the accountants are they're they're criticizing Father Tado, saying he's just a dreamer. He's just a dreamer. He doesn't have his feet on the ground. I mean, he's a good man, he's a saint, but he's just, he doesn't have any common sense, they seem to be pointing out. So they're criticizing him behind the doors. Father Todd is sitting in the main entrance, reflecting. He all of a sudden Knocking on the door, Father Todd gets up and opens up the door, and it's a, it's an elderly couple. It's an elderly couple. And this elderly couple is they've never had any children and the man is retired and he's heard about the works of Father Otado he said Father Otado we've heard about the many good works that you're doing We've heard about the many good works that you're doing. And he says that, you know, <clears throat> you know, we never had any children, but we'd like to give you, we'd like to give you a little something for your works. So they give him an envelope, they give him an envelope, and they, Father Tado, thanks him profusely for their hospitality, for their generosity, and Father Tado goes on to say that our home is your home. He thanks them. Then what he does is he goes and he opens up. He opens up the envelope and he sees in that envelope a donation of a million pesos. A million pesos. We're talking about a hundred or at seventy-five years ago. 
75 years ago. And he himself is shocked. But a million pesos is a lot, a lot of money. So he goes into the knocks on the door and he goes into the room where the accountants are counting the money and they're trying to make ends meet and he takes the envelope and he throws it on the desk and says hombres de poca fe hombres de poca fe hombres de poca fe and he puts the envelope there on the desk opens up the envelope and shows them on me yon de pesos hombre de poca fe hombre de poca fe men of little faith men of little faith why did you doubt why did you doubt and that was enough money to pay to defray the costs of the old guy decrease in Santiago and to start to build and start to build the new building in Colima start to build the new building Ogar de Cristo in, in Colima my friends these stories are really wonderful But I'm, 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 I'm going through the first reading in the gospel where Jesus says, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth, you are called to be the hill on the top of the mountain. The light is not made to put, be put underneath a bushel basket, but rather, let your light shine before man so that your You'll give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I'd like to uh, tell now a personal anecdote. I'd like to tell you a personal anecdote. This is probably about Maybe about eight years ago, we used to have an uh, we used to have a, a eight o'clock mass in the evening in Spanish, and I had that mass one night. That night, it was a kind of cold, rainy night. And after finishing the Mass and we're closing up and greeting the people after the Mass, a young man came to me and he wanted to talk to me and it, it was kind of cold and rainy, kind of like the, the same situation of Father Alberto Hurtado. What I noticed was that uh, the young man did not have any shoes. So he'd come to church, he didn't have any shoes on. So before he left, walking in the cold, dark, rainy night. What I did was, I did this. I took, I took off my, my shoes I took off my shoes and I gave my shoes I gave my shoes to that man 
And as it was, my shoes fit this this man was about my it was about my my size. I gave my I got about an eight of eight and a half nine size shoe. I gave my shoes to that young man, and he went out into the dark, cold night with my shoes. And then I had to walk back home. I had to walk back home without any shoes. Now I went up into my room because I reasoned I had I had an extra pair of shoes. And John the Baptist says, if you have a, two cloaks and someone does not have the cloak, give the cloak to the other. That was my thought. Well, I have another pair of shoes. This young man doesn't have any shoes, so he should have my shoes. My shoes are now his shoes. And I went into my room that night very, very happy. I didn't have any shoes on, but I had the grace of God. I had the grace of God and the peace of God burning within my heart. So my friends, I've explained to you the first reading in the Gospel by the lives of saints, especially Saint Alberto Hurtado. I'm going to pray for you, you pray for me, that all of us will try to be a light shining in the darkness, imitating Jesus Christ who said, I am the light of the world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.